Hello everybody, um, today we're going to create a new growing bed, um, or at least it will be next year, we're going to create the actual bed, put the potato buckets into the bed, which is going to be lined, and we're going to be using uh, totally recycled materials for that, bricks in this case, um, in a herringbone style you'll see, but first of all I've got to get my shallots in the ground. So let's make it happen. See you up at the plots. One small bed. Some bone meal. And a load of shallots. Let's make it happen. So the hole is made. And then we get some bone meal. Sprinkle it in. Again, when you're planting these out, if you use the pot that it came in as a template, you know then that when you plant the plant in, it's going to be the right size. Like that. And then we just sort of earth it around. We'll be watering it in as well. You can tease the roots out a little a little bit before you put them in and that helps the roots then find the way through the soil and spread. And there we go. 15 shallots should turn out to be around 70 or 80 shallots, fingers crossed. Right guys, there's some remodelling work going on up at the top end with Magical Michael Derbyshire of all Mike Derby's farm. Thank you for that. He's out of because he's knackered. He's been doing all work while I've been just watching like a pillock. Up at the top end, there, we're just going to clear those weeds out, the bricks that are there. There's tons of brick up at this. There's loads up there when you look at it, isn't there? All underneath oh, there. <laughs> yeah, and they're all mixed, stacked them all up at the side here that we took out from this base. It's the, it's the base of an old shed that used to straddle two plots, Joe's side and my side. Um, but now they've been cleared off, we've got this stack of bricks there and we can just run. Mixed idea that the herringbone style going down for a border, so rather than use up the wood, which we are probably going to be using up the wood as well, like, but we're going to be utilizing the natural materials found inherently on the plot. There's stealth there, <laughs> morning, morning, Joe. Just explaining what we're doing up at top here, so yeah, we're going to crack on with that. I'm quite happy with that. Mix gives us a lift doing it. Uh, I'm going to replace that brick there because I think we can find another half brick. That'll do. It should do that one, I think. Yeah, that's better. So that's like a herringbone down the sides. It's not quite straight. I'll try and straighten that up a little bit later. And then we packed it the size with the soil, the existing soil, cleared the majority of the weeds and the detritus out of it because there was tons of brick and glass and these plastic, thick plastic sheets as well that were underneath it. It was a right pain in the backside. But that one's straightening up a little bit, but it'll be, uh, it'll be spot on. And then I'm going to put um, a weed membrane on top of that, which is, it's a, bit, it's a bit like yoga matting, I'll show you. I don't know where the hell it came from, but uh, young Michael, who's across over there, he had a big roll of it over that way. So yeah, we've dug it out, made it level. It's going to get the, the membrane on top of it now. I'll try and straighten it up. Straight, I can't speak again. I'll try to straighten, straighten it up a little bit more than that. There we are. Just level it off. I'm going to put the black on it now. <coughs> just started to rain now that's the stuff I'm on about I'm hoping it's going to be the right length but it's more or less the right width a couple of inches short but uh, it's like a sponge like I say like a yoga mat type of stuff don't know where he got it from young Michael ask him I think that will do got all those bricks there I'm going to be putting another one in this area 
these, hopefully, if I can get rid of all that crap that's up at the top there, I'll have a sort through there, see which bricks I can save, and the ones that I can't save are going to get tipped off. Try and level it off, and try and get these onto the... Maybe. My little Daleks. Because they're kind of in the way there. There's... I mean, we've got this area here that I could put them. It's going to narrow that down a little bit, but... Hmm. When you start doing stuff like this, you always come across things that you need to get get settled. It'll do. I might even put some pavers down here at the side in the end. Um, but yeah, I think it looks all right, doesn't it? it does the job, doesn't it? In a traditional style. A more traditional style, I suppose. I can move those over, can't I? I'll move those over so I can straighten it up a bit. Right. Thanks a lot to Mick there for that. Um, that's one job done. Next job is to raise the bed inside here. Tiki Tunnel 2. In preparation for the tomatoes that are going to be going in. That's the bed. We've got, at the moment, as you can see there, the potatoes. Those are the potatoes that we were doing as free bucket growing. So that's the mole hills that are in there. In there. And the, uh, the past the best shop bought potatoes, just random white potatoes that are in there. One in each. Because they are like a main crop one. But we don't know what they are. But they were free. And then we've got the other potatoes there, which weren't free. Anyway, I'm digressing. They're coming out of there. They're going to be put into the Lady Farmer's greenhouse. And I'm going to top that off. I'm going to actually need to build that up to a height of about 10 inches. And then that's going to be full in the same way that this one's full on this side. A lot of clearing up to do. I'm a scruffy get me, but uh, I'm like a... Ma I I'm like a squirrel. You see something bright and, and the squirrel's off. He's, he's looking at what that is. That's, that's me. Joe will tell you. Get distracted. Easily easily distracted. I get. Right, anyway, we're going to crack on. So, yeah, I've got to build up that bed so that it's the same height as this bed on this side, which is about 10 inches. So I need another uh, another run of timber. So let's have a look and see what we've got because I know I'm mu I moved. Yeah, I did. I moved the timber from here, which was part of Daryl's mum's fence. So we'll use that. That'll easily do the job. There's about 18 inches I'll need to cut off from that with the trusty Makita jigsaw. And I'll have to denail it as well. Now, if some of you boys and girls have never denailed a plank of wood, this is how you do it. So you flip it round to the reverse side so the pointy ends are sticking up. a tap flip it around like that and then using the claw hammer you slide it in like that hard to film and extract nails at the same time that's how you do it and then, of course, because these nails can be stuck into little little feet, you make sure you get shot of these in the appropriate way. You can hammer these so that the flatten can be used again, which I may well do. Just try and straighten them up a bit. But yeah, you've got to be careful, especially when you've got kids knocking about on the site, that you uh, anything sharp like that gets uh, gets dealt with in the correct way. Right, well that's in, and I'll tell you what, it's pretty damn warm in here. I've had that door shut off, I've just opened it now, and it was pretty, I don't know what temperature it is, but it's, it's warm. It's only about 13 degrees outside. But inside, in here, in these tunnels, especially with, especially with, man, you're right, especially with the doors shut, it's, uh, 
it's hot. I, pay, I bet it's 25 degrees, 30 degrees even inside there. So, uh, yeah, it's not the ideal conditions for the brassicas that are in there, so I've got to get those out Monday tomorrow. So I'm going to do a bit tomorrow on it. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, di it's dinner time and I've had nothing to eat yet, so I've got to get that sorted out. I've got to, got to start to look after myself a little bit better as regards to the diabetes. Otherwise, I'll be, uh, I'll be in a right pittle, won't I? So I've watered up as well. Everything's... Just had a bit of a bit of a watering up because as I, as I say it's uh, it's hot in these tunnels so I've got to make sure I'm, I'm keeping the moisture levels all right and the roots for these plants damp they've got to be potted on tomorrow there's four to a a three inch pot there that's no good they're going to get their own three inch pots could do we get them outside, but we had a mild frost last night. Only very mild. Got down to about minus one. But the sweet corn doesn't like it that. And it would have probably killed it off, which I don't want. According to the weather forecast, we don't have any suspected frost for the next 10 days. But you can never be too sure. It only takes a, a mild frost, really. To, uh, to bugger them up this week on but that's where they're going to be going into that bed eventually but they'll need potting on I think I think we're best off with our last frost dates around about the 17th of May so that's a couple of weeks off yet so they're gonna have to be potted on and kept indoors anyway we'll, we'll end on a happy note so uh, yeah that bed good little bed that we've just created there with the heading heading bone bricks the sort of jagged crocodiles back of bricks that we've created this is behind me there See if we can get these shot might be better down from this side there you are I think we'll have I think we'll have that as our thumbnail. Right, catch you later on boys and girls. Have a good weekend. Ta-da.